Welcome. We're here today to find out what the heck working equitation is and why you should give it a try. I'm Trish Hyatt, international competitor, technical delegate, and judge, and I've spent my lifetime training horses and riders. I'm also a computer geek and design online programs to help spread the knowledge that I've gained. I love to teach, and I'm passionate about helping people to understand and succeed at working equitation. I had never heard of working equitation until I was at a big charity horse show in Texas, but when I discovered that it encompassed skills I had acquired from many other disciplines, all rolled into one, I knew I had to give it a try. Where else can you see English riders and western, dressage and rainers, jumpers and barrel racers, not to mention trail riders, all in their discipline's tack, being judged against each other on an even playing field at the level they are ready for? And where else can you see this kind of diverse group of horse people laughing and talking and helping each other out? That's what I've experienced with working equitation. The people in this sport come from all different disciplines, but all have the same goal of finesse, unity, partnership, many other words and phrases that all mean the same thing. They all want to develop a relationship with their horse while having fun. There was nothing in my area at the time that I discovered this, very little available online except for speedrun videos. So I attended my first judging and technical delegate seminar to learn more about the sport. I jumped in with both feet. My first show was an A-rated show held in conjunction with the U.S. Nationals. We won our division. I was hooked. But even if we hadn't, the people I met were very welcoming and helpful and want the best for you and your horse. What more could you want? I belong to working equitation associations in three countries. I am a technical delegate in two and a judge in the other one. I teach clinics whenever I can, but want to reach more people than time allows. So I've been making online courses and webinars to bring the joy and knowledge of working equitation to more people. And so here we are with the quick version of what the heck is working equitation and why I think you should try it. Working equitation came to us from Europe. People from Spain, Italy, and France who work stock, like our cowboys in North America, but also have a classical dressage background, wanted an event that showcased the training of their horses, and working equitation was born. The following year, Portugal joined them, and turns out their national horse had a great aptitude for the sport. Since then, it has spread throughout the world with record growth. Each nation may have some variations in obstacles due to regional differences, but all are working towards the highest level, Masters, that is overseen by the World Association for Working Equitation. In North America, there were seven levels developed for working equitation, enabling the sport to be attainable for everyone. The first level is done in the walk and trot, with one or two hands on the reins, while the highest level, Masters, the obstacles are ridden in the canter, with one hand on the reins in all trials. In between, at each level, the requirements for gait and balance of the horse increase. Many of the levels allow you a choice of gaits on specific obstacles, so you don't ask more from your horse than they are physically or mentally able to do, which helps with developing their skills progressively. You can start at the level that you feel is appropriate for your horse. Regardless of how highly trained your horse is, it can be useful to start at a lower level while you learn about the sport and get feedback from a judge. When you are consistently scoring well, you will be required to move up to give the less experienced people a chance. You can also choose to move up at any time. You have a choice of one or two hands on the reins until you get to advanced or master levels, so you can assist your horse to improve. That said, there are times in the obstacles that you will have to carry, move, or open something. So even from the first level, you will ride part of the course one-handed.
In the next four sections, I will describe the four trials. Whether you are a dressage rider, barrel racer, jumper, trail rider, rainer, eventer, or ride side saddle, there is something for everyone. Riders coming in are often strong in one trial and not in another. With specific working equitation practice, all the trials will improve, but it will also carry back to your current discipline and improve your horse's performance there. We'll start with the fourth trial, as it is the one that the others are based on. Let me make it clear, the fourth trial is completely optional. It is only occasionally offered due to lack of suitable facilities, and it's judged as a team event. While the other three trials contribute to the team score, they are also scored individually. The other three trials are the only ones required, which makes this sport accessible to anyone, regardless of tack, breed, experience level, or previous discipline. This trial I'm referring to is the cattle trial. Please, if you're not into working cattle with your horse, do not leave the webinar. Remember, this trial is optional. We will learn about it first as the other trials are based on what's required to create a working horse that can go out in the field and work stock. But those same skills required of the working horse can be used to improve any other event you do with your horse. And if you have a horse that's not as good as you'd like in your current discipline, you'll find that each of the trials contributes something to your horse's overall training while keeping them fresh. They improve the performance in their other trials, as well as your other disciplines. The cattle trial is made up of teams of three or four riders. The task is for each rider to go into the herd and bring a specific cow across the line when it's their turn. The rest of the team cannot cross that line. Their job is to help stop other cows crossing that line and help the rider to move the chosen cow to a pen at the other end of the arena. It is a timed event with a time limit and penalties as well. Once the cow crosses into the pen, or the time is up, that team leaves the arena and the next team comes in. After all the teams have gone once, the first team comes back in and their second rider goes into the herd to get their specific cow and it continues, as I've described, until all teams and team members have had a chance to pen their cows. Each rider on the team gets three minutes, when it's their turn, to get their cow out of the herd and into the pen. The three fastest times count towards the team score. There are some differences regionally, so it's important to check the most current rule book for your country. If you have worked with cattle before, you'll catch on to this format quickly. If you have not, it's good to get some practice first so your horse is used to cows. The other three trials that we're going to talk about next are all good for training your horse to be handy and responsive and building a partnership where you trust each other and can do the cattle work. The three mandatory trials start with the dressage trial. Here again, if dressage is not your thing, please don't leave. It's not as bad as it sounds. The dressage test shows all three gates of the horse and variations of the gait depending on the level. The introductory level is just walk and trot. The tests also include stop, immobility, rein back, specific sized circles and arcs, transitions between and within gates, and as you move up the level, start to include lateral movements, but none to worry about when you're just getting started. These are all skills that any rider needs to have to not die in the real world. I speak from experience as a trail rider. The ability to put your horse where you want, when you want, and at the speed you want can save your life, or at least your kneecap. Each level of working equitation, remember there are seven, has its own dressage test. What that means is that there will be a specific pattern to be ridden in a 20 by 40 meter flat arena. It will have letters that indicate specifically where a movement should begin and end. 
No one knows the exact origin of the letter placement chosen, although there are a couple of theories. This is one thing you do want to memorize. The judge will score each movement separately, giving a score between 0 and 10, with 6 being satisfactory. So if you totally blow one movement, no big deal. It's only a maximum of 10 marks out of 220 to 430 possible marks, depending on the level. Just regroup and carry on. You could still win. At the lower levels, you don't even need to memorize the test, but can bring a caller to read it for you. It's good to memorize too, though, so you know what's coming up. After the show, you'll receive a copy of the test scores, and usually there are comments on the lower scores so you know what you need to work on. The judge is looking at where you go, and they know what you're supposed to be doing, so accuracy is important to demonstrate obedience. But more importantly, they're looking at how you go. Whether your horse is relaxed, supple, balanced, connected to you without resistance, straight, which on a circle means their spine is aligned with the line of travel, which is much healthier for their body. Do you have good impulsion, which is energy, not speed, and collection, suitable to the level that you're showing at? Collection refers to the horse carrying themselves in a way that allows them to do their job efficiently, and not a false collection of pulling them into frame, which will mess with the first requirement of relaxation. You don't need to have all this working to get started. It will develop as you work through the levels and as you read your score sheets and adjust your practice accordingly. If you already do dressage, there are only slight modifications to reflect that this is a sport for a working horse where efficiency of motion is required and collection as you move up the levels is an advantage to the working horse. If you're new to dressage, I hope you've seen that there's nothing to worry about. It's just good riding, being measured, to enable you to progress your horse systematically and progressively. Even if you never show, doing specific moves at specific places lets you know if your horse moves the same way to the left as to the right. The more even they are, the longer they'll stay sound. Dressage is the preparatory work to be able to maneuver through obstacles safely, with good balance, with the willing cooperation of your horse, both in the real world and in the ease of handling trial. So what is this ease of handling? It is a numbered obstacle course. There are 19 potential obstacles, 18 of which are used worldwide, and one that's a slight modification. I will be showing you what they are and how they're supposed to be worked in the next free webinar that you can sign up for at the end of this one. Each level requires a minimum number of obstacles, between 10 and 12, and it's rare to see more than three added to that except at a championship. Although the obstacles are numbered, you choose the route, balancing efficiency and strategy, which is affected by how your horse feels that day how strong, supple, balanced, and responsive. My favorite thing about ease of handling, besides riding it, is that the judge will score it the same way as the dressage trial, giving me valuable feedback both on my training thus far and how my horse feels about the training. It's one thing to do it. It's another thing to share a mutually enjoyable dance through the obstacles with your best friend and partner. No matter where in the world you do working equitation, you will see the same obstacles. Countries can also have additional ones that are specific to their country's stock working tradition, but the main ones used come from the World Association for Working Equitation. Your country's rule book lists the obstacle specifications, execution requirements, and judges' assessment criteria, which will be covered in part in the next webinar, the what and how of working equitation obstacles. 
You also get to do a course walk with the judge, so if a gray area exists in the rules or in the course map, you can ask for clarification. There's extra time to walk the lines you plan to ride and see how they feel. You'll also receive a course map to follow, and the obstacles are numbered, so if you get lost, just keep riding till you find the next one. Each level has different gate requirements, or choices of gates, for different obstacles. This means on a good day you can choose the more challenging gate for your horse and a potentially higher score, and on a not so good day, or when you first start at a new level, you can choose the easier gate and work on perfecting your technique. A slower gate done well can score higher than a faster gate done poorly, as it's not just about doing the obstacle, but how well you do the obstacle. The comments I made in the dressage section regarding whether your horse is relaxed, supple, balanced, connected to you without resistance, straight, with impulsion, and collection suitable to the level you're showing at apply just as much here, and that's why the horses enjoy it so much. The obstacles are ridden with finesse, and your horse has time to think and balance themselves. This pays off later when you do the speed trial, and they've learned how best to organize their body. And with the fitness developed in the dressage training, they're less prone to injury. If you already do obstacle events, you'll find your precision is greatly increased by learning working equitation, riding ease of handling, getting feedback from the judges, and from your horse. If you are new to working obstacles with your horse, you'll find them a great way to measure the results of your other training, including dressage. You will need to position your horse accurately to perform the obstacle correctly. If you're not able, you won't need a judge to tell you, as your inability to complete the obstacle will show you where your horse is not listening. With practice and guidance, this will improve, which will also improve your dressage and other events. Our final trial to discuss is the speed trial. The funny thing about speed is that at the lower levels, you don't necessarily have to go fast to win. Horses that go fast often take more room to turn, which uses valuable time, and there are penalties for knocking things over that also add time. Speed is not offered at the introductory level, but all other levels do a speed run. The jug obstacle is not done in speed, and the pen is only done one direction instead of both, but other than that, the same obstacles are available to be used. For riders that don't like to go fast, or their horses are not ready, this is another opportunity to school the obstacles as you would for ease of handling. As the horse progresses, you start to add in pieces of faster work, always keeping in mind your horse's fitness and mental state. If you rush teaching this part, your ease of handling trial will suffer for it. A horse has to learn how to be fast and not lose his mind. Although you are working obstacles and not livestock, this trial prepares the horse to go after the cow quickly and immediately settle and be quiet again while remaining handy. If you and your horse do speed events now, this will improve your precision and rate, the ability to control the speed rather than letting it control you. If you do not currently do speed, I hope I've shown you that it is something you also can do as you gradually build up speed, as you and your horse are physically and mentally ready. You do not have to show to benefit from working equitation. The training for it will benefit your horse and your relationship. And it's not boring. If you do want to show, you can compete against others, or take it as a personal challenge to just do better this time than the last. Knowing that by doing so you're both improving your relationship as well as contributing to your horse's physical well-being. There are four trials if you choose to progress to the cattle trial, but otherwise there are three mandatory trials that work together to build your horse into a well-rounded individual. 
No matter what your tax style, your choice of breed, or how experienced you are, there's a level suitable for you in working equitation.